Superintendent Gary McCarthy has been an excellent leader of our police department over the past four and a half years. His community policing strategy has led to the lowest overall crime rate on record, and his efforts to re remove guns from the street have yielded significant progress. But Superintendent McCarthy knows that a police officer is only as effective as when he has the trust of those he serves. Superintendent McCarthy and I began a discussion on Sunday about the direction of the department and the undeniable fact that the public trust in the leadership of the department has been shaken. Yeah, maybe they should get Al Sharpton. I'm sure the public would trust him as police commissioner. Uh, joining us now on the Mallsburg panel, Ford O'Connell, Republican strategist and political analyst, and Rick Unger, senior political contributor with Forbes.com and co-host of Steel and Unger on Sirius XM. All right, uh, gentlemen, Bernard Kerrig was with us at the top of the show. He said that uh, the uh, commissioner, Gary McCarthy, who he hired here uh, on the NYPD force, uh, was scapegoated. And if there's no trust over the delay in the release of the video, the public needs to look at the mayor himself and the county DA. What do you say, Ford? I, I would absolutely agree with that. I would say that Rahm Emanuel has taken the Potomac two-step of covering his behind to Chicago. Look, the problem here, obviously, is Rahm Emanuel's policies and the fact that this stinks of a cover-up and McCarthy's going to be scapegoated. But you know what I find funny is? Rahm Emanuel knows that he's not going to be the one who's eventually impeached over this, which is a shame. Yeah, and Rick, of course, there's a lot of speculation that the video wasn't released, and this was uh, swept under the rug for a year because Rahm Emanuel was running for re-election at the time. Yeah, what's so touchy about this, I have to say, I mean, it's, it's a crime when I have to agree with you guys, but this is not a good thing. As you look at the dates involved and the timing of when this all happened and the, the existence of the video, dangerously close to uh, Emmanuel's runoff, <clears throat> excuse me, to be a reelected mayor. Uh, I'll tell you what, I don't know that I think that the police chief was scapegoated. I think he's part of the issue, but I do have to agree that this is likely to go up to Rahm Emanuel. Lucky for him that there is no provision in Illinois law or in Chicago ordinances for impeaching a sitting mayor. All right, now there was a news story a couple of days ago, actually on Monday morning or Sunday evening, that the University of Chicago uh, was closed uh, no classes on Monday because there was an online threat uh, posted against the safety of the uh, the men and women on that campus. And uh, I, I, I don't know if you've heard this because I've been watching the news all day long and uh, because it turned out to be a man who uh, I assume is black, uh, Jabari Dean, a 21-year-old student at uh, the uh, University of Illinois at Chicago, which is not the same university, uh, and he posted online, let's look at what he posted online here. This is my only warning. At 10 a.m. on Monday morning, I'm going to uh, go to the campus quad of the University of Chicago. I'll be armed with an M4 carbine and two uh, Desert Eagles fully loaded. I will execute approximately 16 white male students and or staff, which is the same number of uh, time McDonald was killed. Then I will die killing any number of white policemen that I can in the process. This is not a joke. I am to do my part to rid the world of the white devils. I expect you to do the same. Now, guys, uh, th 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 that's one part that should have been, if this was a white guy saying about blacks, would have been nonstop wall-to-wall -wall coverage on every uh, liberal network and mainstream media network that there is. We would know this guy's name. We'd see his face. We'd know the story. Shh, let's not talk about it. Plus, a judge released this guy to the custody of his mother, house arrest, and he could leave the house to go to religious school, to go here, to go there. What the heck's going on here, uh, Ford? Well, I do agree with you that if Jabari Dean was white, we'd hear a lot more about this in the mainstream media, much like we hear about the Colorado Planned Parenthood shooting. I don't understand how this guy is getting released from jail without at least a psychiatric evaluation, given the comments he made and the racial tensions going on. But what I find even more ridiculous is his guardian or his relatives are saying, well, you need to let him go because it's just fun and games. Saying that you're going to kill 16 people is not fun and games, White period. devils. White devils, Rick. <laughs> Yeah, look, I mean, I'm going to take this in two parts. One, I was well aware of this story since it first happened, so I, I don't think I buy into this being about the media coverage. I well, do, you're however. you're also a creature of Twitter, Rick. What's that? 
You're also a creature of Twitter, Rick. Well, not, that's not where I learned about it. I learned about it reading the Chicago newspaper, which I think you guys would probably define as a liberal paper. That said... Well, that's because it's a local story. I do think... Well, I read about it in other papers, too. But I, well, my point is that's not the story. You may want to make that the story, however. Ford got exactly right, and that's the second part. I am absolutely amazed after what this guy wrote that this judge released him saying that he didn't appear to have the ability to carry it out. He was pretty specific about what guns he intended to use. So I don't quite understand that rationale, and I got to agree with Ford. How this guy was not committed for the maximum amount of time you can commit somebody involuntarily absolutely astounds me. And, and, and get me. this, his mother asked the judge if the arrest will affect his chances of getting a job. Yeah, Don't worry, yeah. Obama and Hillary will make it so that the, the, uh, job, the uh, yeah, employer so. will never know. So. Uh, we're coming back. A lot more Hillary's emails and Trump. Don't go away. All right, folks, we will return to the panel in a moment. I want to remind you, America Talks Live is back this Friday, 4 p.m. Eastern, hosted by me, Steve Malsberg. If you want to be a part of the action and call me and talk to me on the air, jot down this number to call us live on Friday, right before 4 o'clock Eastern. It's 877-NEWSMAX. And submit your videos to NewsmaxUSA.com. That you could do now if you want in advance of Friday. All right, Ford O'Connell and uh, Rick Unger are here. Uh, let's listen to what one of the uh, people who met with Donald Trump yesterday, one of the Black Pastors group, had to say when the meeting was over. I didn't have concerns because I was already convinced, but there were concerns that the liberal media has put out portraying Mr. Trump in a light that I know he's not uh, the type of person that he was depicted to be. So what we were able to do today was allow people to see his heart for themselves and to make up their own minds about him. And they, 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 they find out that he's not the person that the media has depicted him to be. All right. And the media is uh, running with this story. They ran with it in advance that these people were not endorsing him, uh, which was true. Uh, but I've seen several come out. Even, even people, uh, CNN had one guy on, an elderly gentleman today who was there, and said, I'm not endorsing anybody. But I give Donald Trump credit for c having us all there and listening. Um, Ford, I mean, I think it was a good move on his part, reaching out to the uh, African-American and minority communities. Well, I absolutely think it's a good move to reach out to the African-American community. But I will say it was an awkward evolution of events. Whether Trump touted it or the media touted it, he should have been a little bit smarter about the optics of the whole situation. But I do give him kudos for reaching out to the black community who we're going to need, particularly in the state of Ohio, whoever the Republican nominee is. Right. And, Ricky did it without uh, meeting with Black Lives Matter. <laughs> Look, I... You know, of course it's good to reach out to every community, so I'm certainly not going to criticize him for that. I did, however, get a big kick out of his saying that there was a lot of love in that room. I spoke to three different people who attended that meeting today. Uh, there wasn't that much love in that room. In fact, there was a fair amount of disappointment that Mr. Trump allowed the people who worked for him to do most of the talking, especially when it got to substantive issues. So, uh, you know, good for him for reaching out. Always a good idea. He didn't accomplish very much, though. Well, I think uh, he accomplished, again, uh, reaching out. And I think I spoke to people uh, uh, who were there, Ray Negron, um, uh, who joined us earlier in the show, who was in there and said that it was uh, a very up atmosphere. And Trump did a lot of listening because people had a lot of complaints. It wasn't, he wasn't there to tell exactly how he was going to combat them. Hillary's emails, they released a whole bunch more yesterday. And uh, with the 328 emails now deemed to be classified in this latest batch, it brings to over 1,000 of the emails that Hillary sent and received on her personal uh, email server and, and a little whatever she had, BlackBerry. Uh, over 1,000 of them are, have now been marked classified. And there's one... Uh, where she said uh, after the hearings, uh, she, they were talking about how she did when she said, what difference does it make, that hearing? Uh, there were congratulatory emails going from Uma Abedin to Hillary. You looked great. You were fabulous. I'm ble being flooded with emails about how you rocked. And when, um, when one uh, um, naysayer said uh, you should be uh, a little less combative, and it was Mark Penn, 
Um, Philip, uh, Felipe Reigns wrote back and said, give me a break. You did not look rattled. You looked real. Blah, 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 blah. I mean, the narcissism here, when Hillary obviously blew it, Rick, for them to all say, oh, you rocked it, is pathetic. Well, you know, I will say this, and this is something I picked up on, on during the earlier email dumps. There was nothing in this list of emails that, that I thought were incredibly damaging, but here's what does trouble me, and we've been seeing this. She seems to have a staff of syncophants. They never Absolutely. give her bad news. Final word um, from you, Mr. Ford? Well, Hillary Clinton's clearly a very insecure person who I do agree with Rick apparently needs yes men. But what I can't figure out is how come she doesn't know what channel Homeland is? That's what I was going to say. She can't find Homeland on cable TV <laughs> showtime. That's biggest problem. All right, guys, no thank you. for football now. <laughs> Rick and Ford, thank you very much. Up next, give me five, ladies and gentlemen. But first, you know, more than 80 million Americans make up the baby boom generation. And astoundingly, most have done little planning for their retirement. The Baby Boomer Survival Guide is here for boomers just like you to help prepare for your retirement. This guide is packed with money-saving tips and valuable advice to grow and protect your wealth and health. For example, on page 59, you'll learn a simple trick to bump your Social Security payments up by as much as 25%. On page 83, you'll discover the five best states to move to with low taxes and fantastic health care. Page 198, reduce your Medicare co-pays while expanding coverage and so much more. We're confident you'll instantly save over $1,000 in hidden tax deductions you didn't even know about. The baby boom generation can thrive in retirement, and this survival guide explains how. This book is available on Amazon and bookstores everywhere, but Newsmax has a remarkable offer. Free for the baby boom survival guide, and it's available right now. Simply visit the website on the screen or call us toll-free at 800-779-5682. And check out the free offer. That's 800-779-5682. You have nothing to lose, and you could profit big time.